Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic. Positronic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I want to talk to you about the latest episode of Star Trek Prodigy. It's called Dream Catcher. And it starts as Dahl is recording a captain's log, which is interesting because he's not really a captain, but he's assumed the role of captain, as is his character to do so. He's kind of a Han Solo type, right? So he's, or a Will Riker type, let's stay in universe. And he's taking the lead. And he explains that Janeway has been teaching the crew some basics of starship navigation, how to plot a course, how to execute a course, just as the ship comes upon an unexpected M-class planet in the Herogen system. Now, the Herogen were a race that was featured on Star Trek Voyager, if I'm not mistaken, which also took place in the Delta Quadrant. Anyway, she says they should probably explore the planet since that's what Starfleet does and since they are cadets, which she says just like that in a way that sort of hints at the idea that she realizes they're not actually Starfleet cadets, but she's not ready to acknowledge that she knows this yet. So that I think is cool because up to this point, I'm like, how does she not know that they're not like, you know, come on. So, cause I mean, you know, she's just a hologram, but she's sentient and she's got the, you know, a computer brain and she's an AI. How would she not know this? So, yeah, I think we're going to see her acknowledge that in, a, in an episode soon. So anyway, they land the ship on the planet, which is cool. Now, this ship doesn't seem to me to be as big as other ships, you know, like the Enterprise, Voyager, and so forth. So it's one of those that can land and take off. Voyager could technically do that, but not the way this one does. This one lands and has a ramp so that the crew can actually exit on foot. So I don't think Voyager was designed to do that exactly but this ship is. So and that's how they boarded the ship originally when they found it. So I think that's cool. We're gonna see the ship landing from time to time. In order to go exploring the planet, Janeway gives them access to phasers and tricorders. They're shown the ship's ATV, which is called a runaway, which Dahl takes on a joyride pretty much immediately <laughs> as the rest of the crew explores the area around the ship on foot. After Janeway explains that she can't explore with him because she's a hologram, which is weird because why does she have a portable hollow emitter? I realized that the one on Voyager wasn't Starfleet issue, but like they figured it out. <laughs> why wouldn't that become standard issue post Voyager? I don't know. Anyway, she doesn't have one. Gwen again escapes the brig, but this time she does it by means of telepathically contacting her weapon, which is like a malleable sort of liquid metal thing that usually rests on her person, down her arm, kind of looks like a tattoo. And it's outside her cell. So when she contacts it, she's able to use it to operate the cell controls and get out. And at that point, she's able to get control of the ship and contact her father. She even takes control of Janeway. I'm not sure how, I guess her dad taught her how to operate a starship. So she contacts the diviner and tells him where she is. But for some reason, before she's able to take over the ship and take over Janeway, Janeway's not able to reach the crew to tell them what's going on because Dahl had exited the runaway to look around and couldn't hear the communications console. And none of them had comm badges, which doesn't make sense. She gave them phasers and tricorders, but not comm badges? That doesn't make sense. She let all four of them go out in separate directions or, or possibly go out in separate directions, it, 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 unable to contact each other? Like, no, that would not have happened. So I really like the writing on the show. I think it's the best written Star Trek show we've had since Enterprise. But I think the writers are probably not complete Star Trek experts. So that's why they forget things like hollow emitters. And I think they are deliberately making choices that don't make sense within Star Trek in order to make their plots work. So the previous week it was, when you say transfer all power of the shield to go down and so does the brig force field. And this week it was, well, they don't have combat, so she can't reach them. Well, that's just stupid. 
but it makes the plot work. So that's why they're doing it. And it's kind of annoying because it, it's, it takes you out of it. And not only because it takes you out of it, but because the rest of the show is so well done. It's like, what, you know, it's a 4.9, not a five out of five, but it could be a five out of five very easily. If you don't do dumb things like not give them combat. So I don't know. I just wish they'd find other ways for their plots to work the way they want them to work without doing dumb things like not giving an away team combat. Just anyway, the rest of the crew finds odd things in the area on the planet, like a tasty looking familiar stew that the engineer finds, like young life forms to play with, which is what Rock finds. And what seems to be the ship's engine just sitting in the middle of the woods, which is what Zero finds, as well as in Dahl's case, images of what might be his parents when a vision of Janeway spawned by the planet tempts him to enter like a sentient grove of some kind and embrace these people that could be his parents, which he realizes, okay, this is not good. And he runs from it. He, at that moment, figures out, you know, this is bad. Pretty much because Janeway, the Janeway vision says, yeah, I'm not your Janeway. I'm, you know, something else. And kind of turns all evil on him. So he runs. Now, while this is all happening, Gwyn is trying to lift off with the ship, but it, it, it gets grabbed up. It gets grabbed by this sentient grove thing, so she can't take off. Dahl takes the runaway to pick up Zero, and they go looking for Rock, who's been almost fully enveloped by the grove, which she thought was just a bunch of cute alien babies, like, dogpiling on her. And then they find Jankum, or Jankum, who was eating part of the grove because he thought it was the stew. Well, Gwyn even sees a vision and it's of her dad, which she thinks is real because she's called her dad. She's like, oh, you got here fast. But she soon discovers that it's not him just before it tries to grab her. She then tries to take off again, but can't. And she has to abandon ship in a shuttlecraft. But she doesn't actually do that until she's able to get Murph safely off the ship, who she saw cowering in the shuttle bay. The crew then find her and Murph in the shuttlecraft not far from the ship, and Dahl expresses alarm at the fact that she almost abandoned them, and that's where the episode ended, so it's a cliffhanger. They are stuck on this planet, which would be bad not only in and of itself, because they're stuck there, but because they know that the Diviner is on his way. Uh, this was a really good episode. Again, once again, fourth episode, fourth good episode. I think they're doing a killer job with this show. The Gwyn character continues to be awesome in that she's a, a character that's conflicted. And I think that's great. And like I said last week, I think she's going to throw her lot in with the crew and oppose her dad eventually. So I'm looking forward to that happening and, and how she gets there. And I, I, just, I just think the show is great. It's, it's firing on almost all thrusters and it's hitting almost every mark. And it's just a very good show. I have tiny nitpicks, tiny nitpicks that would put it over the top, you know, from like a 4.5 to a 5. So I hope they start changing those couple of little nitpicky things because it would just make it perfect. Um, I'm looking forward to next week. It, it's just a great show. And that's really all I have to say about it. So until next time, my friends, I wish you peace and long life.